Hey everyone, welcome to the Jesus King podcast. Hopefully you're doing well. Today I have Emil, he's back with us. How you doing Emil? Well, thanks, how are you? Good mate. Uh, we've had a, a good um, discussion with um, Abraham and, and that was pretty fun. So today we, we got you back and now uh, we're doing a topic on discipline. Yeah. Uh, before we get to start, I mean, I know it's a very simple question. Yeah. But what is discipline and why do we need it? Okay. So discipline, in my opinion, is uh, self-control, is having the willpower to have structure and order in our lives. And that could be uh, psychologically, um, physically, or spiritually. Mm. And the reason why it's important is because um, it helps us get to where God wants us to be in our lives, physically, spiritually, and psychologically. Mm. Um, and the Holy Spirit cannot use us and guide us if we don't have discipline the discipline to follow his orders follow his word and follow his directions so so would you say for example if someone doesn't have a disciplined life that can be an obstacle uh between them and whether their walk with god as a on a personal level or as a person who's serving the lord right yeah um absolutely you can uh it can have uh it's like a direct correlation between that and having a weak spiritual life and having no discipline. Mm. Um, it's very hard to get to where God wants us to be if we do not have the, the discipline to follow his instructions. That's it. That's nice. I, you know what this reminds me of? Um, it does remind me in the sense of, um, especially, you know, serving with a lot of people, mm in in the past 15 years yeah. that's how old i am and been in the ministry um i i did find that there are people that are very gifted mm. very talented but not disciplined yes um they either they're one week and not the other yeah. or they might start something and, then and drop it. yeah and drop it and not finish it so um today unlike say 5, 10, 15 years ago, when I'm serving with someone, I start to look for self-control, a person who's well-disciplined yeah. with their time, uh, with their ministry and how efficient they are. Mm. To me, that, that became kind of like started to climb up the ladder where oh, it's, it's very important for me now. Absolutely. You know, back before that, I was like, well, oh man, this person is gifted. This person is yeah. called, this person is talented, whatever it is, I'm, I'm sure they can, they can be great to work with. But then as, as time goes on, <clears throat> and we know that ministry is not this, say for example, one Sunday in, in the whole entire year, yeah. or, you know, in, in a month, it's more come in every single day, get it done. Um, some days you might not be feeling the best. Yeah. Some days you might be tired. Some days you might feel like it's not working out or whatever the case is. You have certain people who have this discipline in their life and they are gonna be there no matter what. You're gonna get it done. Oh yeah, I really enjoy that. So. I think it's actually very important for us to discuss this today yeah. because it seems like, especially um, in what we have in our generation, we are lacking a lot of discipline yeah. and that's kind of pouring out into other areas of our lives uh, in regards to our self-control, in regards to things, as you said, in those three areas of your spiritual life, psychological life physical life yeah. which i would love us to unpack and maybe go into each part and Absolutely. see how the the influence that it has in in those areas of our life yeah so should. yeah that's that's how i'm feeling man i'm just pouring out to you so no, i agree <laughs> um just also just to touch on what you just said uh when you go to work when you're applying and you're going for an interview what do they judge you on when you first come in how you dress, right? Yeah, true. So that's, that's part of how organized you are, how how well you your um, hygiene is, and everything. 
if you don't have the discipline to dress well and you know have that willpower to push yourself to look look good and presentable to your job interview that's that's the first flag no matter how good of a worker you say you are you failed at the first step true well actually that <coughs> that does remind me in, in with another example compared to work mm. like wh when it comes to work we often are disciplined, right? Yeah. If your boss tells you to be there at 8 a.m. You be there every day. You do that, right? Monday to Friday, throughout the year. And, you know, as long as you're working at that job. Yeah. But then when it comes to our discipline into, you know, um, coming together, going to Bible studies, going to church, it seems like being half an hour late is not so bad. Oh, we just fashionably late. Yeah. <laughs> But, yeah, but then, uh, no, I get you. If you think about it, um, maybe that might be like, you know, the people in the church, they're not holding you accountable to it, saying, hey, we do start at, say, 10 a.m. in the morning. Let's all be here. Let's try, you know, to be there on time. Mm -hmm. No excuses. But it seems like we do lack discipline when it comes to gathering together. And and I'm not only talking about be showing up on time. For church i'm also talking about whether we're uh we have a responsibility in the church how we like i i think here um what i've witnessed because i've i've i was brought up um church of the east Australian church of the east is kind mm -hmm. of a similar to orthodox yeah it's that's eastern your background orthodox. yeah it's eastern orthodox yeah. um since then became protestant and what i've seen in churches is for example in the church of the east they're very they dress really well. Mm. They dress like they're going to a, a like you know a place like work. Like they dress with shirts and pants and mm -hmm. and um, and they show up on time. They show up, you know, and they they have that respect for it. They have that structure. Yeah. And I see that structure, but there's no spirit behind it, in my opinion. And then it's like religious yeah practice. But then yeah, we, I go to the Protestant church, and it's the opposite, it's the complete opposite. It's people show up very casual and. They take it less seriously. There's less structure and order, but there's so much spirit. And I think having balance is important, in my opinion. I think having that balance, that structure, that organization, and and that respect for the for the church, for 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 God, is important. And I don't mean like how we dress only. It's the attitude behind it. It's that it's we have to take this seriously. This is we in front of God. We in the presence of God. We have to take. We have to treat it that way. And we don't have this nonchalant attitude towards it. And again, I'm not talking about how we dress specifically. I'm talking about the attitude behind it. Mm. And I see that when I see that in churches, because some churches you see that they have the attitude, that they respect it, they respect God, they take it seriously, they have that hunger. And the reason why they have that is not because they're lazy, because in my opinion, laziness is, is not just a lack of passion, right? It's you have a passion for laziness. Right, because your passion for laziness is stronger than your passion for God. That's what I believe. Lack of discipline is is that passion for laziness. It's not so, a lack of passion for your, for your, um, for your ministry or for whatever it is. It's it's your passion for laziness for doing nothing mm -hmm. is greater. So you're kind of putting your effort into that. You're investing your time into wasting your time. Yeah that's that's what it is well actually i guess it does make a bit of a sense mm. um but it, if you look at w when you're talking about discipline and laziness um it, it's one of those unique sins when it comes to laziness right because if you're a disciplined person and you're dealing with different types of sins you have the discipline and the drive to try and tackle those sins yeah but then if you are starting out lazy, right? And, and you want to get your life back on track, you want to get yourself disciplined. And we're talking about, you know, spiritually, psychologically, physically, it, it, it becomes difficult because you're trying to do something that's in a way out of your nature, right? Like yeah. I gotta do something that I'm not comfortable with. Yes. I, um, I haven't been doing in a very long time. Yes. 
It's like someone trying to run for the first time, right? It's, not it's work well. sitting on the couch for, for years and years and years. And then you're like, oh, I'm going to start getting healthy. I want to go for a run. Yeah. But then when you try it, you're like, well, it's much harder than what I thought it was going to be. Yeah. And a lot of people think that, okay, since it's so hard, I'm just going to give up. And we shouldn't have that mindset no, when it comes not. to discipline. Because to build that self-control to build that kind of character that would you know uh be well well in control of themselves uh, it takes time it does it takes time and it takes does. a lot of hard work and there's a lot of hurdles yeah um nothing goes up in, in straight line right things will go up one day other days you feel like it's too hard i want to give yeah. up and it's as, easier to give up yeah it's yeah. very easy it's very hard to keep continuing when you're under duress under pressure and I think what you said is very important. It's, we have to have that willpower to go on. And sometimes we feel like we're running on E, we're running on empty. We don't have any willpower left in our tank. We just, we wasted it all on trying not to sin. And yeah. then we have nothing left over for doing what needs to be done, whether it's spending time with our family and doing like doing stuff as simple as doing our jobs, like our normal work, you know, mm. properly. And because we've wasted all our willpower and our passion on on forcing ourselves against our nature to to love God and hate sin. Yeah. Well, um that'd be a good verse to share. Sure. Um 1 Corinthians chapter 9 verse 24 to 27. Um do you not know that those who run in a race all run but one receives the prize? Run in such a way that you may obtain it. And everyone who competes for the prize is temperate in all things. Now, they do it to obtain a perishable crown, but we for an imperishable crown, which is, we're talking about spiritual yeah. discipline there. Therefore, I run thus, not with uncertainty. Thus I fight, not as one who beats the air, but I discipline my body and bring it into subjection least when i have preached to others i myself should become disqualified mm. so you, you've got paul here and, and he's the writer of of the letter yeah he, he's speaking about how he's training his body um to further glorify um god, god. and to push the ministry of god further mm. and he's saying that i'm putting this i'm disciplining this body putting it under subjection, right? To to do the will of the spirit that lives yes. in me. Yep. And sometimes I feel like we're lacking discipline because our body is not it's not under our control. It's not subject to the spirit. And therefore whatever the body is desiring, it's it's like this spoiled child that is in us. Yeah. Right? Whenever it cries, whenever it wants attention, we're there and we accommodate for, for that instead of kind of training our body, training the flesh to say, hold on, you don't make those decisions. <clears throat> you don't make those decisions. It's God, yeah. God's will that makes the decisions for my life. Mm. I think that's important. It is. And, and that kind of connects with the fruit of the spirit, right? Galatians 5, 22, 23. It speaks about, um, you know, having that self-control, that patience, perseverance, mm. things like that, that we need. And these things that come from the spirit is an aid for us. Yeah. So this whole idea of I need to get myself disciplined on my own doesn't have to be this way. Doesn't. We can ask the Holy Spirit to help us to discipline ourselves. Um, in the sense of whether we are serving him, whether we're living a holy life um, and, and pleasing him. I think that's something very important. And it's, how can I say, it? it's like every Christian knows this. This is the basics. Mm. But then sometimes we need this reminder of saying, wait, Holy Spirit is there. <laughs> like, yeah, th th there is another person in me that can actually help me out. You're not alone, and yeah. yeah, it's it's at the back of my mind, but I actually need to remind myself to say, well, the Holy Spirit is there. I can seek uh, 
the help of the Holy Spirit and he can flourish that fruit in my life. Yeah. Yeah, I think and, that's and, and, you know, there's a verse where it says, if you ask for your father some bread, would he give you a stone? Mm. Or an egg, would he give you a scorpion? How much more would your father in heaven give you, right? And I think if we're asking God wholeheartedly from from our from the bottom of our hearts that we want discipline so we can um, do his will, and I think he he will definitely give that. And, but how do we know that he wants us to be disciplined? And I think there's this... Um, one verse that I was reading in Ephesians 2.10, it says, For we are his workmanship, mm -hmm. created in Christ Jesus for good works, which God prepared beforehand that we should walk in them. Right? Yeah. So he's prepared works for us to do. And we have to do that in a way that's respectful, in a way that's like dutiful, like we're doing our duty, mm -hmm. just like how he instructed us to. And for us to do that and to do it to, the, to our max, like to the best of we can do, because we want to please our father, you know? We don't want to go to heaven and for him not to be happy with our work. We want him, we want him to be happy that we yeah. were good servants, right? Um, in, in you mentioning that, mm -hmm. um, you're talking about, you know, the father and how he's disciplining us. Yeah. I just brought sure. uh, Revelation 3.19. Yeah. Um, it's along the lines of what you were saying. And this is Jesus speaking. He's yeah. saying, as many as I love, I rebuke and chastise. Therefore, be zealous and repent. Yeah. So, Amen. Jesus is there to discipline. Yeah. Right. Discipline us. And you also, if you go to Hebrews, it speaks about how the writer of Hebrew is using the example of a father and son. Yes. He's saying that our parents used to discipline us, right? And sometimes most of it was for their benefit, right? Yeah. But then God, if you are a child of God, yeah. you will be disciplined by God. Yeah. And if God doesn't discipline you, you are not a child of God. That's right. So this is how important this topic is. Yes. People think it's like this, you know, on the side topic. Uh, I'm actually going to read it. It's uh, <clears throat> 12, 5 to 11. Oh, yeah. I'm going to find it. Where is it? I, I think it's so important because yeah. people think this is like a side topic and it's not. Is so important to who we are in Christ. And I think he also mentions it in Deuteronomy 8, 5, and 6, right? How he says, um, you should know in your heart that as a man chastises, chastens his son, so the Lord your God chastens you. Mm. So this is Hebrews 12. Um, and he's saying, have you, have you forgotten the exhortation which speaks to you um, as to sons? Mm. My son, do not despise the chast uh, chastening of the Lord, nor be discouraged when you are rebuked by him. For whom the Lord loves, he chastens and scourges every son whom he receives. If you endure chastening, God deals with you as with sons. For what son is there whom a father does not chasten? But if you are without chastening, of which all have become partakers, then you are illegitimate, illegitimate, illegitimate. Yeah, there we go. I can't even speak. And not sons, right? Furthermore, we have had human fathers who corrected us and we paid them respect. Shall we not much more readily be in subjection to the father of spirits and, and live? Amen. So it, this writer of Hebrew is saying, if you are not being disciplined by the Lord, you should be worried. You should be worried. <laughs> are you even a child of the You're Lord? You're legitimate. Yeah. Um, that's so, crazy. Uh, it's definitely it's definitely something we should be happy about um, when we are. Obviously, that means there's something that needs to be corrected, but God is taking his time to correct you. Mm, mm. Right? And it's a positive thing. It's a, it definitely yeah. is. I mean, obviously, you'd rather not have anything that needs correction, but that's not reality. That's yeah. not that's We're not realistic. <laughs> that's yeah. not realistic. Um so yeah I, I think it's important and um i think it, i think it's something that we should be glad that that happens yeah instead of being discouraged oh god chastised me no no i'm happy yeah that i'm means a god, child i'm a child of god <laughs> yes I, I made a mistake cool. yes but god is disciplining me mm. and i'm growing yeah and, and you know what it is <clears throat> as adults mm. right we we do have this um i guess perspective that an experience 
that you know as children we didn't know why our parents were you know treating us a certain way and disciplining us but then as we grow up we understand why yeah but now as adults that we are children of god we're still asking the same question why and you think hold on you've already learned this lesson from your childhood until now yeah. shouldn't you embrace it in your relationship with the father yeah i think that's that's pretty good yeah yeah so, well, we can't dwell too much on that, no. right? We spoke about the spiritual aspect. Uh, why don't we talk about psychological aspect, sure. right? Because you mentioned three things. You said, uh, you know, uh, discipline comes in, in your areas of spiritual life, psychological life, and physical life. Mm -hmm. So let's sp speak about our emotions, Yeah. right? Because today, um, and this is my opinion, I might be a bit pessimistic here, but I feel like we are growing up in a culture where we are not maturing psychologically, right? Emotionally, you have a lot of adults that are still acting children. like children, right? They, they're not, not in a good kind, not like pure, yeah. you know, like <laughs> yeah, foolish, yeah, without wisdom. Like Jesus saying, you know, you got to become like one of these little ones to enter the kingdom of heaven. But we're not talking about those kind of children. I, I think I think we see it. In, in the way they live their lives and the reason why they're psychologically there's so much more mental illness there's so much more drug abuse there's so much more um depression and things like that it's an anxiety and um and i mean like anxiety disorders and and the reason why this all is happening is because people are putting their happiness as something that's a goal happiness mm. that's what we should try for we should be happy let me be frank. Happiness is very hard to attain. It's it's incredibly difficult to attain um, because it's 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 fleeting, right? The moment you have it, it's gone. And especially in this world, I'm talking about, you know, in, in the world, it's very hard to have happiness permanently because things always go wrong. Nothing can last. Your health doesn't last. Your family doesn't last. Your money doesn't last. Your food doesn't last. Nothing lasts. Mm. So even if you're happy with this food, this is amazing for it ends. Yeah. So how can we have eternal happiness if we're investing in non-eternal things? If our discipline and our passion and everything is something that's not eternal, right? How can we have eternal happiness? It's impossible. It's a false dream. It's not going to work. It's not going to work. Mm -hmm. So we have to invest our passion and our, cause where, where your passion is, is that's where your discipline is going to be. That's where you're going to be disciplined. And if your passion is in being lazy, then you're going to be amazing at being lazy. You're going to find ways that you can work smart, not hard, right? Mm. Just another word for being lazy. And take it from me. Uh, <laughs> I used that before. Um, but yeah, it's ultimately your passion is for laziness. Ultimately, your passion is for yourself, for your fleeting happiness. And yet you're surprised. Why am I not happy? Why am I psychologically not sound? Why am I so depressed? It's because you've invested your time, your passion, your your effort and your everything your blood sweat and tears into something that's fleeting and you expect it to last it's kind of foolish yeah you're building a foundation on sand <laughs> so basically <clears throat> if we're resting on the promises of god mm. and focusing onto that as our main goal this is this is where we're heading then we are emotionally stable because the promises of God are true Amen. and are stable, right? Yeah. It's not that, uh, could it happen? Could it not happen? We trust in the promises of God and God never fails to de deliver his own promises. But then if we hold on to the world and expect that the world is going to, you know, hold its own word it and say, trust me, I'm going to get it done for you. It but then you get disappointed and then you, you start to recognize that. You're basing your emotions on things that can at times be true, at times be false, at times be real, at times be just like a mist, right? It's it's not there. It's a mirage. <clears throat> so I think it's important, you know, building on what you just said is if we want to control ourselves emotionally, we really need to be grounded in the Lord yeah. because every wind, every wave, can actually knock us out with the house yeah. so in in that in that parable where jesus mentions right in the beginning he's saying let me show you a person 
that hears my words and doesn't. Mm. It's the person that's stable, the one that builds it on the rock. And I think that's so important as Christians mm. is we don't only hear the word of Jesus, but we let it manifest in our lives, right? In our works. Yeah. So we can actually be stable in, in the Lord Jesus Christ. Yeah. And as we said right in the beginning, it's the fruit of the spirit, right? This love, this joy, yeah. this kindness, this peace, it all comes from the Holy Spirit. And what comes from the Holy Spirit, it's not something that we would experience in the world, right? What comes from the Holy Spirit is good. It's edifying. It's going to build us up yeah. to be who Christ wants us to be. So we're not just coming up and crashing, coming up and crashing. We're actually building and taking a step forward every single every day season, in the Holy yeah. Spirit. And I think this can be a bit helpful for people that feel like, well, I've been always starting every single day for the last 10 years and I'm still in the same place. Well, are you building in the Holy Spirit? Yeah. Are you moving forward? Are you taking those steps with the fruit of the Spirit? Or are you trying to make sense of what the world is giving you? Because what the world is going to give you today is going to be different tomorrow. And you're going to be chasing different things every single day. That's why you have people, and, and you were sharing this, high rates of anxiety, depression, and so on. Of course you're going to get that because the world is yeah. promising them different things every day. And the devil is taking advantage of that. Absolutely. So I think that that's a good segment. We can talk a lot about this. A lot, yeah. But we got to move on. We don't have too long. Yes. Um, you spoke about the third one, which was physical, physical discipline. Physical, yeah. Um, I, I do personally like that. I need to work on that myself. Yeah. Um, my wife is watching as well. Oh, so it's something... Like, you, better, you better take care of yourself. <laughs> it's something that I've prayed about. It's something that I've uh, asked God for. Because uh, I'll give you an example. I'm sure you know this. Don't laugh. Um, <laughs> so I had a passion for guitars. <laughs> I, I I liked it. I wanted to, to learn the guitar. So I bought a guitar. And <laughs> uh, I've spent more hours. I've spent more hours um, looking at it than I have played it, playing it. Um, it hurt my fingers. And it felt unnatural. And that's that's the thing. Look, that, But here's, the, here's what i got to learn. It's... My passion for not playing the guitar was greater than my passion to play the guitar. And that's where I failed at, you know. Um, so how many chords do you know? <laughs> next question. Next um, question. But I wanted to give a verse. It's uh, this really, for the physical part of life, this really touched me. And it sort of applies to everything because these are all connected, by the way. Your discipline in your physical life is connected to your spiritual and your spirituals, to your psychological. They're all connected. If you're failing in one, you're going to struggle in the other. So you need to be disciplined in all areas of your life. Um, and you should ask for God to help you with that because it's, uh, it's, not, it's not easy. Um, Proverbs 20 verse 4. The lazy man will not plow because of winter. He will beg during harvest and have nothing. Mm. We have to be prepared. We have to be disciplined. We have to be, we have to be ready for the times that you're going to struggle. So now in your areas where you're striving, be disciplined. So when you're in a, in a time where you're struggling, right, you're already disciplined. You already know what to do. Whereas if you're not disciplined, if you're lazy and then something bad happens, you're not ready for it. Mm. It prepares you for hard times. Mm. Yeah. So I think it's important to be disciplined in your physical life. It's, it's important because it connects to your psychological Right? And if you're psychologically and physically drained and tired and, and weak, right? Because you're struggling with your job, because you're not disciplined in your job, you didn't get that raise, you, you got fired, whatever it is, you were not disciplined, right? If you were struggling with your weight control, which I believe I am. Oh, yeah, um, yeah, same. Include um, me in it as well. <laughs> and that's affecting your health. It affects your psychological uh, state as well, right? And because it affects your psychological state and now you're depressed, you're sad, you're whatever it is, and you're not feeling healthy, you're not feeling up to it, you're not, you're not getting enough sleep, you're not, you're not disciplined. It affects your spiritual life. Mm. They're all connected. And this is something that I pray to God for to help me because it feels unnatural to me. 
It feels like something that's going against nature itself. It feels uncomfortable. It doesn't feel good to be disciplined. It doesn't because I don't have a passion for it. So I'm asking God, God, please change my view. Change who I am. Change me so that I have a passion for this rather than laziness. Because laziness pays nothing. The wages of laziness is nothing. Literally, you get nothing. And we saw that in Proverbs. You have nothing. And the wages of discipline are amazing. The more you put in, the more you get out. Yeah. Right? True. It, it's, it's important. It, and you were sharing that we need God's help. But I'll also encourage the people. <clears throat> the the other side of the coin is that don't sit and wait no you know stop be, moving be active about it mm. be active in regarding to discipline and yeah. it's so important that people put so much emphasis on one area of their life and they neglect the others yeah. because they think one is more important than the other and i i get it there are things that are more important yeah. than other things but then what we don't realize is that if you neglect certain areas of your life they can catch Effect. up to you yeah. and they can affect what you are actually focusing on yeah so for for you to have a healthier perspective on life right a healthier walk with god you definitely need to have a disciplined life in your christianity true right you cannot take the grace of god for granted and that's what i like in romans 6 1 and paul made it very clear if if you're saved by grace if you have the grace of god does that mean you can go on sinning? No. no. Why not? And then later on, he speaks about us being slaves to righteousness. Yes. Right? We used to be slaves to sin, but through Christ, we're living a new life. We are slaves to righteousness. Mm. And to to live that out, you need discipline in, in yeah. your life. And I think as Christians, don't, don't take your Christian life for granted. Don't be too um what would the word be like um d don't take it lightly it, it's not something that you could say oh well i have this kind of sin in my life you know it's just one thing but i'm doing better in in other areas of my life that's not how it works in christianity you're living a life of sanctification and you need to be disciplined in your life don't neglect those sins in your life you need to pay attention to them you need to bring them to the Lord and ask the Holy Spirit to help you. Amen. That's something important. Um, we, we've hit our 30 minute mark. What is your conclusion, my friend? I'm going to leave one last thing. Proverbs 12, 1. Whoever loves instruction, loves knowledge. But he who hates correction is stupid. Okay. We don't <laughs> want to be stupid. No. <laughs> That's all I can say. No problem. Guys, um, I'm sure you can take the wise road or... As Proverbs says, we could be fools or stupid, which one you want to be. And that really depends whether you want to live a lazy life or a disciplined life in the Lord. Amen. God bless you all and God we'll see you next time. Take Bye. care.